They tell us they will consider next year the Biden administration's lawsuit against Tennessee over a law that bans puberty blockers and, quote, gender-affirming care for transgender minors. 24 other states have some form of the law on the book. With us now, Shan Wu, former federal prosecutor, served in the Clinton administration as general counsel to Attorney General Janet Reno. Welcome back. As always, thank you. Is this really about what the Supreme Court's going to decide, the trans issue, parents' rights issues, or states' rights issues? Well, it's kind of all wrapped up in there, and uh, they're going to have to walk through quite a quagmire of these sort of competing views to sort through that. They've, up until now, it's kind of curious, they've sort of ducked the transgender issues up until now. Uh, for some reason, they've decided to weigh in on this one. Uh, there was this one in Idaho they held, um, they dissolved the injunction, but that was kind of like a side issue about the extent that the court could have that kind of injunction. Here, you know, it's interesting because it's really in the framework of healthcare versus the locker room stuff, you know, bathrooms, locker rooms, and they seem more comfortable wading into healthcare issues, frankly. <laughs> so how how does this work, though? Because there's there's this question about they're wading into healthcare. It's the second anniversary of the Dobbs decision. Right. Conceivably, if you took the, the Dobbs sort of... Uh, I don't know if you want to say precedent, whatever the reasoning was, hey, we leave these things up to the states. Right. Doesn't that say then Tennessee gets to do this? It, it would, really. And in some ways, you might say strategically, it's a mistake on the part of the um, pro-transgender care folks to push this because it's a conservative court at this time. I think the problem they have in ducking this is a bunch of federal courts have all come out in different ways. And the Biden administration's claim is, at its heart, this is discrimination based on gender. It's kind of an interesting twist since we're talking about transgender, gender-affirming care, but that may be hard for them to get out of looking at the issue because it's being posed as discrimination based on gender, and that they have to look at. Okay, so why do you think that the Biden administration is pushing this, and why did they choose to push Tennessee? Well, I think they also had the choice, so I think it was Kentucky, and I'm not too sure what those distinctions are, I think they're pushing it because they feel like the way it's bubbling up right now, they really have to push it. They can't just sit back. And I guess to some extent it's inconsistent for them to say, okay, just let the states do what they want to do. We think that this is a universal kind of right that needs to be pushed. You said I think it was interesting. You said it was a a Biden administration pushing this in the health care right. the healthcare issue. And it's a conservative court. You'd think that a conservative court, and maybe I'm reading too much into this, would say this is also a parents' rights issue, right? And right. if if the, the the burden, and maybe I'm delving into law here, which I don't play a lawyer on TV, leave that to the lawyers. Um, but I'm thinking about this from a, just from a purely Supreme Court status. The sta the the bar for telling parents, no, you don't have the right to make medical decisions for your kids, the state will make medical decisions for your kids. Mm -hmm. That has to be a very high bar, right? Yeah, it has to be a very high bar. And it's really interesting because, honestly, I don't think the Supreme Court justices, the way they look at this, is really the same way that conservative activists are looking at this in terms of a parents' right issue. Again, they always seem more comfortable second-guessing doctors. <laughs> I mean, actually, ironically, if you go back to Roe, right, it's basically a medical procedure decision. Harry Blackman, who wrote that, was not a doctor. But the court's always very comfortable deciding what's okay on a medical <laughs> uh, procedure standpoint. And I think it does run contrary to the idea of if parents want to do something for their kids, and it's not like some wacko, dangerous medical procedure, then you ought to defer it to parents. Well, I guess I, I guess that, that's what we're going to see decided, right? right. Is it, do they view it as a wacko, a wacko medical procedure? Exactly. Your words, not mine. Right. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.